Vishnu Sahasranama. Name 779. Samavartaha. What does that mean? It's not a commonly known name and it's not a common word. Well, sama, the sum, sum, the prefix sum, is used in the sense of doing something very well or completely, as in Sankirtan. And avarta means to exist, to happen, uh, particularly the, the idea of revolving. This is from the Amarakosh dictionary. Avarta te chakravad brahmayati iti. That which moves as if on a wheel, which rotates. Well, that's what we do in material life, isn't it? We're rotating. Punarapi jananam, punarapi maranam, punarapi janani, jatare shayanam. Again and again we're born, again and again we die, <coughs> again and again we enter the mother's womb to lie there miserably. So we're doing that. And life is like a rotation, If, especially if we're not in these big hellish cities, if we're in the countryside, then we can see that there's a rotation of seasons and we feel that we're part of that. But at the same time, we f gradually feel that although the seasons are rotating, they seem to be more or less the same. We are in a... The time is cycling, but we are in a linear time in as much as the body is born. The Sharavika, the six changes uh, described in Shastra. There is birth, growth, then staying for some time, middle age, you could say, or some period where you're neither growing nor declining. Uh, it's general terms. Then giving birth to children, and then declining as old age comes, and death. These are the six changes of the body. So we feel like we're going in a straight line. But at the same time, we can, it seems to be a revolution. And if we're, in, if we're in the countryside especially, we can see how the seasons revolve one after another. <clears throat> and then from Shastra, we learn that we revolve Brahman. Eta Brahmanda Bhari Ananta Ji Bhagan. Brahman. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu described that this Brahmanda, this egg-like shaped universe, the uh, which is fashioned from within by Brahma, Brahma's egg, it's full of unlimited jivas who with who wander within 8,400,000s of species of life. So we are rotating because sometimes you go up, sometimes you go down, and it's like a wheel. It's as if on a wheel. Sansara chakra. It's well known. The, the uh, metaphor is given that sansara, it is the repeated birth and death. It's, it's as if being on a wheel. So we revolve in this material world, and in one sense, he does so also. But he does it well. We do it not well. We do it impelled by... Lust, greed, anger, envy, pride, and madness, illusion. But he does it. He comes into this world, 
out of his mercy upon us to deliver us from this revolving in this cycle of birth and death. So <clears throat> the first meaning that is derived from this name is he who appears in this world as avatars again and again for the benefit of his devotees. Paritranaya sadhu nam, for uplifting the devotees. So considering this, as we are cycling around, and not in the sense of on a bicycle, but as we are being, we are being recycled. We are like, we are like the washing and a washing machine. We are round and round and round and round. And there should come a point where we start thinking, hey, this isn't very good, is it? I'm, I'm struggling to survive and then I have to die. And then again, what? And then again, I have to become an ant, a slug, a pig, a sow, or who can even state all the 8,400,000 of species of life. Only Krishna can see them all. Ah, I really have to do that again? Even human birth is considered elevated, but it's full of suffering, starting from the very beginning, in the womb, coming out of the womb. And when we start to think, what is going on? Why? Why are we in this suffering condition? Then atato brahma jignasa. Then we have to inquire into the nature of ultimate reality, the underlying principle of it all. And that brahma, ultimately we have to see, that is Krishna. Atato brahma jignasa. Now we should inquire into the nature of brahma, this is fulfilled when we come to the point of Krishna Nusandhan, seeking after Krishna. Krishna comes to this world to seek us. He's looking for us. As <clears throat> uh, we learn from the Bhagavatam, Maya Mrigam, Diet Am An, what is that? Diet Anvadhavad. Uh, he is running after us. Maya Mrigam Dhavato Anvadhavad. Just, we are like uh, play dolls in the hands of Maya. And he is as if running after us out of his mercy. To, to catch us and bring us back. Uh, the biblical analogy is that, well, originally that comes in Psalms in the, in the Hebrew Bible, and then that's later applied to Jesus. But given the analogy that God is like a shepherd, because if the sh if the sheep strays away, one sheep strays from the flock, then the shepherd will go to great difficulty to retrieve that sheep. And the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And he, he brings me to nice grassy places and then he uh, gives me nice, nice streams of water to drink. Of course, the shepherd, he looks after the sheep very nicely and ultimately kills the sheep. So it's not such a good analogy, but uh, <laughs> Krishna, Krishna comes to get us. Again and again and again, he takes avatars to uplift us. Again and again and again, we're born. Again and again and again, we die. Again and again and again, we get, inf we get the opportunity to be Krishna conscious. We don't take it very seriously. And therefore, we have to go back. Ashadathana purusha dharma syasya parantapa aprapya magne vartante mrityu sangsara vartpani Because we don't have faith in devotional service, then we have to go back to the cycle of birth and death. 
But Krishna stays with us. He doesn't give up on us. He comes again and again. Srila Prabhupada sometimes used to say that Krishna is more eager to take us back to him than we are eager to go to him. How many people are running after him? Manushanam sahasreshu kaschid yatati siddhaye yatatavapi siddhanam kaschid maung veti tatvataha. Hardly anyone's interested in anything spiritual, and out of those who are interested in something spiritual, not many take it very seriously, and those who take it seriously and actually achieve perfection. Hardly any know Krishna. But Krishna, so the, the number of people who are interested in Krishna is not very many, but Krishna's interested in every living being. Thus he comes to the world. His most merciful avatar is Nam avatar, because. In the, the holy name benefits even the non-human species. Well, that's true. Lord Ram walking in the forest, then uh, his lotus feet, every blade of grass he touches, the jiva there is, is uh, blessed. Every tree he touches, every demon he kills, they're all blessed. But the holy name especially re- re- reverberates and Parshupaki kita di bolite na pare. Shunile harinam tara otore. Even the birds and the beasts and even the insects and the worms and so on, they can't chant harinam, but if they hear it, then they also get delivered. So that's his mercy. Parashara Bhatta gives this um, meaning. It's saying he comes particularly for the benefit of his devotees. Yeah, particularly if he appears in this world. His avatars are particularly for the benefit of the devotees, uh, those who already evolved in consciousness, who are not satisfied with revolving in the cycle of birth and death. The great specialty of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is that he come Dino Hino Joto Chilo Hariname Udharilo by the grace of Nityananda and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Not only the pious people, but even the impious people are uplifted by the chanting of the holy names given by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So the Lord is birthless. He's not like us, compelled to take birth because of our previous karmic reactions, although it may appear like that. People, they trace a link between, for instance, uh, Lord Rama's killing Bali from behind a tree and then Krishna from a hunter, a hidden hidden hunter, lets loose an arrow which enters the foot of Krishna and superficially kills him. But it's, it's understood that's superficial because even the greatest warriors in the world couldn't kill Krishna with, with cascades of arrows and just some arrow, an arrow in the foot doesn't kill you anyway. Uh, so Krishna just took it as an excuse to leave this world. But some people, they, they say like that, and in some ways Krishna, he might appear to be affected by the imprecations of others, just like Gandhari cursed Krishna, very powerful, very powerful woman, by the, by the strength of her austerities in her pativrata dharma, serving her husband, even though her husband wasn't a very good man. Dhritarashtra, but her service to him gave her great power and she cursed Krishna that you are the cause of the destruction of my dynasty. Actually, they, they themselves were the cause of the destruction of, their dy- of the dynasty. But she's a woman. She feels very emotional when her sons are killed. And uh, the, the proper way of thinking, the, the balanced thinking doesn't, kick in at that time, so she cursed, that your family, they will also, just like 
this whole family was killed. It, uh, a fraternal battle. So you, your family will be killed in the same way. Actually, Duryodhana had been told time and time and time and time again, even by the people on his own side, that you don't, that don't go for this battle, make peace with the Pandavas. Even Karna was saying the Dushasan at certain point in sometimes, mostly they encouraged him, but sometimes they, they would say, don't go for this. Even Vyasadeva himself came and he wouldn't even listen to Vyas. Duryodhana was the cause of all this, of the carnage. But anyway, she cursed and Krishna accepted the curse. Okay, that's good. That's a good idea. They have to go anyway. So why not go out in style? No one can kill them. And they're, 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 who's, they don't die like ordinary people. So all right, you know, let it be. It's Leela. It's Leela. That is to be understood. So... Krishna comes again and again and again for the benefit of the world and for enacting his glorious pastimes. We hear of him performing pastimes. At the time he performed the pastimes, he did so for the immediate benefit of the world. And then Vedvyas, who is also an avatar of the Lord, compiled these pastimes, which are there in verbal history, Puranas, he compiled them in the Puranas, especially the Bhagavad Purana and Vishnu Purana. So that, and uh, we can go on hearing about, about the different avatars. And so the, the, not only when he was present as Matsya, as Kurama, as Varaha, as Narasimha, and so on, not only was he, when he was present, did he benefit the world, but even today, even right now, because even such a, wretched personality as myself as saying these names and discussing them. But there's benefit there. That is his kindness, that we're still benefited by hearing about him. So this is the repetition that we want. We want to repeatedly hear the pastimes of the Supreme Lord, the glories of the Supreme Lord, Again and again, nityang bhagavata sevaya, here again and again. That will purify, that is his mercy. He makes himself available to us in the form of <clears throat> oral reception. That is his great mercy. And he sends his great devotees to record all these things and put it in writing. For instance, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami, I'll quote now from his Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, uh, the teachings of Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Sanatana Goswami. I'm quoting from that with translation by His Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, by whose grace we have Chaitanya Charitamrita. The, Later, an edition was brought out by Ed Dimmock and Tony Stewart. But that's an academic presentation. No one's ever going to become a devotee by reading that. So this is devotional. It's a funny thing. These scholars, they like the scholarly edition. Chaitanya Char they like to read the scholarly edition of Chaitanya Charitamrita. But Chaitanya Charitamrita is not meant for becoming, for scholars scholarly study in that way. It's meant for devotees. It's meant for increasing devotion. So how do they think they can understand it? If they, It's just like the, the medicine, you take it in such and such a way, and they, you take two drops on the tongue, and instead they put it in the ear, and it's not going to work. You don't get the effect. And they'll study it and get a PhD and go to hell. Ha, what's the use? Let's listen to Srila Prabhupada's translation and the Bengali verse verses describing this. Aiche Krishna Lila Mandal Choda Manbantare Brahmanda Mandal Bapi Krame Krame Fire. Just as there is an orbit of the sun, there is an orbit of Krishna's pastimes, which are manifested one after the other. During the lifetime of 14 Manus, 
this orbit expands throughout all the universes and gradually it returns. Thus Krishna moves with his pastimes through all the universes one after another. It's very scientific, you see, because there's one day of Brahma and within one day of Brahma there's 1,000 uh, Chatur Yugas and within each Chatur Yuga Within one day of Brahma, what is it, 14 Manvantaras? Uh, that's stated here. So, going on to the next verse. Shoa Shatta Bhatsha Krishna Prakata Prakash Taha Jaiche Brajapure Kori Lo Bilash Krishna remains within the universe for 125 years and he enjoys his pastimes both in Rindavan and Dwaraka. Olata chakra pray she lila chakra fide shab lila shab brahmande krame udai kore. The cycle of his of his pastimes turns like a wheel of fire. Maybe you've seen sometimes that uh, as people they have a hoop which is set alight and they whirl it around. And so it's like a wheel of fire. You also have the fireworks in the Western world. They have Catherine wheels. That bang, when in my thought of a Catherine wheel came out after decades. So the, the cycle of his pastimes turns like a wheel of fire. Catherine wheel goes round and round and round on fire. Thus Krishna exhibits his pastimes one after the other in every universe. Janma Balya Poganda Koishara Prakash Putana Bodhadi Kari Mo Shalanta Bilash Krishna's pastimes, appearance, childhood, boyhood and youth are all manifested, beginning with the killing of Putana and extending to the end of the Moshala Lila, the annihilation of the Yadu dynasty. All of these pastimes are rotating in every universe. So I was just mentioning about that, the annihilation of the Yadu dynasty. It it goes on every time. Although at the time, no one knows. Kano Brahmanda Kon Lila Hoyabashtan Tate Lila Nitta Kohe Agama Puran Since all Krishna's pastimes are taking place continuously, at every moment some pastime is existing, in one universe or another. Consequently, these pastimes are called, these pastimes are called eternal by the Vedas and Puranas. In other words, right now, it's Janmashtami. Krishna is being born in some universe. Literally, I mean, we celebrate Janmashtami. We just celebrated a few days ago. Uh, but right now, the pastime of Krishna being born is going on in one of the innumerable universes. Somewhere he's sucking Yashoda's breast. Somewhere he's sucking the breast of some of the other elder cowherd women when he takes the form of their sons after they're kidnapped by Brahma. Somewhere he's dancing with the gopis. Somewhere he's in Mathura, Dwaraka, in one universe or another. Somewhere he's speaking Bhagavad Gita. This is not, we say Purana means history, that's from our perspective, but it's news. What's the news? What's, what's the latest news? Krishna is born. What's the latest news? Krishna's gone to Mathura. Kangsa is having bad dreams. Ah, oh, so pick up the news. What's the news a day later? Kangsa's dead. Hurry, ball! There are a lot more demons coming. It's news. It's it's eternally fresh. We see that the great devotees, they take pleasure in hearing the same pastimes again and again and again. Srila Prabhupada, he took great pleasure in reading his books, hearing the past. He would take great pleasure in hearing Krishna book read to him every afternoon. From when he, One time he was staying a long time in Los Angeles. Every afternoon he would have Krishna book read to him. He would take great pleasure in hearing that many times he did. He was staying in Rindavan, 
Śrīla Prabhupāda loved to hear about Krishna, even though he knew the stories very well, but he, was, he hears and he enters. He's there. So, Krishna comes again and again and again. <clears throat> he comes to this world which is full of suffering, but he doesn't suffer. He is simply enjoying. When Srila Prabhupada was speaking with what is described as a Christian existentialist priest who said to Srila Prabhupada, we've now understood the nature of Christ, that it's God sharing in the suffering of man. And Srila Prabhupada told him, that is rascaldom. God never suffers. He doesn't share in the suffering of man. That's the, that is the... Uh, <clears throat> teaching of Paulianity, because Christ himself didn't speak that. It was invented by St. Paul. The idea that Jesus died on the cross to requite all our sins. He had to suffer. God had to suffer to clear all our sins. But Srila Prabhupada rejected that idea as being rascaldom. But in one sense, and this has to be understood very carefully, one has to understand the difference between the material suffering that we undergo in this material world and the spiritual ecstasy that Lord Krishna always experiences. That one of the reasons Krishna comes to this world is because in this world, there is real paramour love, or more real than in Golok, in the eternal, eternally manifested pastimes in the spiritual world. So the feelings of separation, the, which give rise to the highest bliss, that is enacted with 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 much more intense drama here in this material world. So these are things which are to be understood very carefully by the topmost students of spiritual science. It's not something that we discuss just meeting someone on the street or even maybe not among newer devotees. Of course, these talks are on the YouTube and anyone can tune in. They, they are exalted topics. They are in Srila Prabhupada's books, which are distributed widely to everyone. Now, another meaning that is given to this name, he who cycles very well, uh, is that he performs his function of creation cyclically. He does it very well. This uh, Here we have in this material world, what is the nature? Krishna, the, the cosmic situation Krishna describes in one line, one pada, which is one fourth of a verse in Bhagavad Gita, bhutva bhutva praliyate again and again being created and destroyed. So this is going on under Krishna. He, the, the, the wheel of time is turning and he's turning the wheel, and very expertly. So you can say he's efficiently turning the wheel of life, even a potter's wheel. <laughs> potter's wheel or, or a lathe to... It's relatively easy to turn the wheel, but to know how to utilize that takes some skill. It's not, someone might be a, a brilliant intellectual, but you sit him, sit him down in front of a, 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 a potter's wheel, he doesn't know how to, he doesn't know what to do to make a pot, and the potter does it very expertly. Uh, to work a lathe and to, say, make a, a knob for the top, of, a wooden knob for the, at the top of a bedpost. It's not a hugely skilled thing to do, but 
I couldn't do it. Maybe I could have done it years ago, but no, I wasn't very good at those that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, then it, it requires some knowledge and some skill to be able to do that. To even work simple as a, as a potter or a uh, there's another common English name Turner, so maybe that means I, I, I maybe derived from someone who uses a lathe. Is it? You know that. So uh, that requires some skill. What about the whole universe? Is turn? Is uh, we see from the subatomic level, everything's rotating, come up to the atomic level. Every, everything's rotating, and then the planets are rotating, and then the, everything's just going. And, and we, in, in going from body to body to body, are rotating. It's all a big rotation. Everything's going round and round. Krishna's overseeing it. He doesn't get dizzy. We get dizzy if we go round and round too fast. And we, we lose our sense of balance and understanding, and... Krishna is everything under control. Maybe that's one reason atheists, they just can't conceive it. Theists and atheists, neither can conceive of what he's doing. Atheists can't believe that there can be anyone who can do that. And theists can believe it, but at the same time can hardly understand it. It's... it's how this is, a, what kind of control he has and intelligence he has, it's just completely beyond our frog-in-the-well intelligence to understand. Baladev Vidya Bhushan gives the same idea as uh, Shankaracharya. He created the same thing. The, the creation goes on again and again. He quotes in this regard, Baladeva in this regard, uh, regard, quotes from Vishnu Purana, unusually in the sense that Gorya Vaishnava is usually quote from Bhagavad Purana, Srimad Bhagavatam, but also from, they also quote from Vishnu Purana. Vishnu Shakti Para Prokta Ketra Gya Keta Tagaya. As Srila Prabhupada would quote that from time to time. Okay, here's the quote Baladev gives. Avyuchinas tatastve te sarga stityanta sangamaha. Creation, maintenance, and destruction continuously happen due to the Supreme Lord. Quoting from Bhagavad Gita in this regard, Lord Krishna says, Prakriting swam avashtabhya. Visrijami puna punaha, bhuta gramam imankritsnam, avashang prakrite avashat. The whole cosmic order is under me. Under my will, it is automatically manifested again and again. And under my will, it is annihilated at the end. So it doesn't specifically say about a cycle here, but that's what's going on. Another very nice. Um, understanding of this name is given by the commentator Krishna Datta Bharadvaj. His thoughts, the thoughts of Lord Sri Narayana, Vishnu, Krishna, are always revolving around his devotees and what he can do to uplift and protect his devotees. So he has so many thoughts. If he has to oversee the turning of the universe, then there's so many thoughts. Of course, for him, he has his shaktis. Parasya shakti vividhai vashuryate svabhavaki jnana balakriyacha natasya karyan karanang cha vidyate natachamas cha vyadikas cha drishyate he is the Supreme Lord, and who, there's no comparison to him simply by his energies. Things go on as if automatically. Uh, so his thoughts are, 
He knows everything, sees everything, understands everything, but his thoughts revolve around my devotees because they're in his heart. Sadhu nam hridayam tvaham. Sadhu nam hridayam tvaham. Sadhu nam hridayam mahyam. Nar madanyate na jananti. Nahang te bio managapi. Krishna says, the, the devotees are my heart. I am their heart. They know nothing but me. I know nothing but them. So it's like that. We may see someone very busy in so many things, but what's in their heart? What are they thinking about in the core of their heart? Krishna's thinking of his devotees. So let us take shelter of the devotees. If we take shelter of the devotees, then Krishna will be very happy to protect us and let us enter, and he, he will let us enter the, his devotees, the, the circle of his devotees, and that way we'll no longer have to bother Krishna by cycling within the birth, of, birth and death cycle, rotating within the cycle of birth and death, causing Krishna trouble instead of pleasure. Devotees see the, the miseries of this material world as given by Krishna as a prod to us to realize that we're meant to be with him. Hare Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to all the great devotees who have commented on Vishnu Sahasranam and all the other Shastras and all those who take pleasure in doing so. Vancha kalpa tarubhyas charkripa sindhu vivacha patita anam pavale bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo namaha dante nitaya churnakam padayani patya kritva chakaku shatavetara he sadava sakala eva vihaya durat Goranga Chandra Charane Guru Tanurana Parivadatu Jano Yatata Tava Nanumokarona Vayang Vicharyama Hari Rasa Madhira Madati Mata Bhuvi Vilutama Nartama Nirvishama Hari Krishna Hari Krishna